Welcome, my dear students and YouTube viewers, to our continuing coverage of Chapter 5, Thermochemistry. In this video, I will teach you state functions and enthalpy. So, a state function is any property that a substance has, which is completely dependent on that substance's current physical state and not on how it got there. Properties that do depend on how it got there are called path functions. They vary or depend on the path or way by which the substance arrived at its current situation. For example, let's pretend that you are currently in the state of California. Now, if I ask you the question, what state are you now in? The answer is California. The answer to this question does not matter how you got to California. So because this question, what state are you currently in, asks nothing about how you arrived at California, we would say that your current location is a state function, not a path function. In contrast, if I asked you, how did you get to California, then the answer would differ according to which path you took to arrive at California. Thus, your mode and path of travel would be a path function, not a state function. Now, some examples of state functions, that is properties that do not depend on the path taken to arrive at their current state or situation, include internal energy, enthalpy, and entropy. Now, enthalpy we'll talk about in just a moment. Entropy we'll talk about in a later video that I've linked to in the description below as well as floating over my head somewhere, all right? To explain, all substances have some amount of internal energy. For instance, if you have two cups that each contain 50 grams of liquid water at 25 degrees Celsius, then they both have the exact same amount of internal energy. It does not matter how they each got there. For instance, if the cup on the left was originally at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius and was gradually cooled to arrive at its current situation, its current state. But in contrast, the cup on the right was originally at a temperature of zero degrees Celsius and was heated to arrive at its current state. It does not change the fact that the current states of both cups are exactly the same. The internal energy within them is identical. The fact that they each came from a different initial location and traversed a different path to arrive at their current situation or state does not change the fact that their current states are identical and their current internal energy is identical. We see then that internal energy is an example of a state function, a property that is determined completely by the system's current condition, situation, or state. State functions' values depend only on the present state of the system and not on the path that it took to reach that state. Make sense? So, what is enthalpy? Well, enthalpy, for which we use the letter H because the letter E was stolen by energy, sorry, poor enthalpy, is one way of reporting a system's total energy where enthalpy H is equal to E plus P times V, in which E is equal to the internal energy of the system P is equal to pressure, and V is the volume of the system. The change in enthalpy for a reaction is called delta H and is defined using the following equations. Delta H equals the enthalpy of the final state of the system minus the enthalpy of the initial state of the system. Or when applied specifically to a chemical reaction, delta H is equal to the total enthalpy of the products minus the total enthalpy of the reactants because the products is the final state and the reactants is the initial state. You follow? Now, because enthalpy, or H, is a state function, delta H for any transformation depends only on the final and initial states of the system, that is the products and the reactants in a chemical reaction, not on the path or paths taken to get there. Now, as a reminder, building on principles we talked about in earlier videos, linked to in the description below, I want to re-explain endo versus exothermic. So as we learned in an earlier video, an exothermic process is one that gives off heat to its surroundings. Exothermic processes have negative delta H values. In other words, delta H or Q, which we've talked about before, it's an abbreviation for heat, or as I like to call it, quiet is negative or less than zero for an exothermic reaction. Now, just like money being withdrawn from your bank account, which from your bank account's perspective is a negative thing, exothermic processes lose heat to their surroundings, which gives them negative delta H values. This means that exothermic processes feel hot. So if the side of a flask feels hot to you when you're touching it, 
during a chemical reaction, then the system, in this case the reaction, is giving off heat and transferring that heat into your hand, the flask, and the surroundings. Hence, the reaction would be exothermic. Now, by comparison, an endothermic process is one that consumes heat from its surroundings. Endothermic processes have positive delta H values. In other words, delta H or Q, which is an abbreviation for heat or quit, is greater than zero. Now, just like money being deposited into your bank account, which is a positive thing from your bank account's perspective, endothermic processes consume heat from their surroundings, which means they have a deposit of heat from the surroundings and ergo a positive delta H. Being the opposite of an exothermic process, endothermic processes and reactions feel cold to their surroundings.